Hi there, readers and writers. My name is Miss Hodson, and I am your virtual teacher. And as we begin our next seventh grade lesson, we're going to take a look this week at lesson 25. With lesson 25, we're going to look at a new article on our same guiding questions, and they are how is the adolescent brain changing? And how can I make an informed decision about an issue like screen time and then effectively argue my position? So this week, our article changes to a new topic about the brain and how sleep is a key component to a healthy brain and a healthy life. So the name of the article, the title is you sleep to recharge your brain and support learning and memory. You'll see this three page article in your digital learning packet. And there's a picture of a guy sleeping on the front page. And this article is going to be all about how sleep helps us recharge and affects our health. So you will need your digital learning packet less than 25, your note catcher, and a pencil. So pause the video here, make sure you have all of these items in front of you, and then come on back and we'll get started. All right, we have two learning targets today for lesson 25. One is I can determine the gist of the sections of text. So the gist is just the idea of the general I, uh, practice and understanding. A gist is not really a main idea. It is what is it mostly about, a gist. And so we will read each of the sections of the article and your writing note catcher today will have you write a gist statement for each of those sections. What is it mostly about? The second learning target is, I can use a variety of strategies to determine the meaning of unknown words and phrases. And in this particular article, there's a lot of vocabulary that is going to be new. Again, it's about the brain. So that's gonna be some scientific um, vocabulary, new words, and also some multi-syllabic words where we could look at prefixes and suffixes and break the word parts um, away from each other in order to determine what it means. So those are our learning targets today. And we're gonna get started uh, with reading this article. So, you know, with a family member or a caregiver, you could do that, but part of our lesson 25 is I will do a read aloud of the lesson. And a couple of times I might pause and make some comments um, and I might even, if I make mistakes, I will correct my mistakes and you'll be able to see how I do that too. So your responsibility is to have your eyes on print. So you're not just listening to me read the article. You are going to have your eyes on print. Maybe you're writing a utensil, like a pencil in your hand, where you can circle some vocabulary or, um, annotate your article, underline things, put a little star here, something you want to remember. So we're going to get started and that's how I would like you to engage your eyes on print, maybe your pencil in your hand. You sleep to recharge your brain and support learning and memory. If you try to explain sleep to an alien, it might look what we humans do every night. It might make what we humans do every night seem bizarre. All right, I've got to get that correct. So it has some strange phrasing in it. Let's try it again. If you try to explain sleep to an alien, it might make what we humans do every night seem bizarre. That felt better. 
Yes, we get to experience dreaming during sleep along with rejuvenating rest, but we also become completely defenseless and are open to attack. Sleep then starts to seem strange and pointless. Sleep, however, is not useless. Theories on sleep state that it re-energizes the body's cells, clears waste from the brain, and supports learning and memory. Sleep can even regulate mood and appetite. Yet what precisely happens in our head when it hits the pillow? Well, philosophers have tried to describe and explain sleep for thousands of years. Aristotle was an ancient Greek philosopher who lived over 2,000 years ago. He described sleep and waking as opposite experiences, characterized by either the absence or presence of perception. Aristotle thought that sleep happened as a result of breathing after eating. Maybe, he suggested, those exhalations thickened and heated our blood and then rose to the brain to be cooled before finally journeying to the heart. Aristotle's ideas about why sleep happened were a little off, but he had the brain part right. Scientists use electroencephalography. Ooh, big word, let's go back. I'm gonna break it apart. Electroencephalography. Electroencephalography. I know they're telling me I can also just say EEG, but I really wanna know this word. Electroencephalography. Electroencephalography. I'm just saying, it's not always easy. Scientists use electroencephalography or EEG to measure brainwave activities during sleep. Brainwaves are the electrical activity our brains produce. They charge, nope, they change in height and number depending on what we are doing. Scientists have categorized sleep into two states called non-REM and REM, which repeat every 90 minutes several times during the night. Non-REM can also be called NREM and further divided into stages S1, S2, S3, and S4. Light sleep stages. When drowsy but still awake, brain waves become slower and increase in height, slowly matching up with each other. The first two stages of NREM sleep are relatively light stages. The brain waves slow down and increase in height, forming what are called theta waves. Waking up from these stages of sleep is fairly easy. And sleepers might not recognize that they were asleep at all. Stages three and four of NREM sleep are the deepest and hardest to wake up from. These stages have delta waves, which are the slowest and highest brain waves, and also the most unlike waking brain waves. Sleep walking and talking mostly happens during delta sleep. During NREM sleep, our brains continue to gather information through our senses. As sleep becomes deeper, we respond less to our environment and become less aware of what is going on. The mind becomes focused inwards and is less tied down to the outside world. REM sleep gets its name from the darting eye movements that accompany it, called rapid eye movement during REM sleep. Muscles go loose and the body is basically paralyzed. In REM sleep, our brains look the same as when we are awake. It is also the sleep stage during which we dream. No longer in control. Dreams are not 
hallucinations. The brain behaves differently during hallucinations than during dreams. During dreams, a part of our brains called the frontal cortex is disrupted. The frontal cortex helps us control our behavior. It oversees actions like thinking, decision-making, and planning. Without the frontal cortex, there is a less there is less self-awareness and the brain is open to the strange contents and logic of dreams. Outside information is cut off, creating a tight, self-contained dream loop. Why do we sleep though? Scientists do not exactly know, but they have several ideas. One theory has to do with sleep playing an important role in memory consolidation. In other words, sleep improves memory's ability to stick. Research suggests REM sleep strengthens the brain's ability to process memories. This prepares memories for future use and also filters out unnecessary ones. The study published in 2014 states that sleep could help define important memories and then to make and make them distinct from unimportant ones. During sleep, the connections or synapses throughout the brain weaken. This is thought to balance out the strengthening of connections that happens as we learn when we're awake. By cutting away excess connections, sleep cleans the slate so we can learn again the next day. Interfering with this scaling down process can in some cases lead to more intense and perhaps unwanted memories. Flushing out harmful toxins. Another theory is that sleep is restorative and cleans out harmful toxins that can hurt the brain. During sleep, the space between brain cells increases, and this allows harmful toxin proteins to be flushed out. In an October 2013 issue of the journal Science, researchers published the re results of a study hypothesizing that the brain uses sleep to flush out harmful waste. This waste removal system, they suggest, is one of the major reasons why we sleep. By removing harmful waste from the brain, sleep may stave off diseases like Alzheimer's, which is characterized by memory loss. We do not have a precise definition of sleep's purpose but we know it impacts different physical and psychological activities, including cleaning up brain waste and turning information into memory. Each of these theories can be used to explain why we sleep. We just haven't worked it all out yet. Give us a break. We're asleep most of the time. And that is this week's article. Now remember that you can refer back to this lesson and this read aloud at any point that that would help you. So this is lesson 25 and that's where you, this week you'll find me reading those words in the article. I'd like you to think about why do you think sleep is important for your brain? And how many hours of uninterrupted sleep do you get every day? Reading this article and preparing for this kind of made me curious. And so I wear a Fitbit on my wrist and it tells me how many hours of sleep I get every night and I've been tracking it. So that's something you might want to, you know, pay attention to. How much sleep are you getting? And how is that possibly helping your brain stay healthy as well? I'd like you to pause this uh, lesson, pause the video, and with a family member, a caregiver, or possibly a friend, talk about a couple of these things. What is an important reason to get enough sleep every day? And how can sleep help you take care of your brain? Also, in what ways are scientists learning about the value of sleep? 
And when I went through the article, I underline with my pencil some things that I want to go back to. And I remember on the very first page um, in the second paragraph, they listed a lot of good reasons for sleep. I numbered them one, two, three, and four. They talked about um, it re-energizes the body cells, it clears waste from the brain, it supports learning and memory, and it also helps regulate mood. So go chat, have a talk, conversation with someone near you, and think about these three questions and then come on back and we'll get to the lesson today. All right, welcome back. So as you know, our read, think, talk, now we're gonna write this framework, helps us understand the things that we're learning. So we're going to have you find your lesson 25 note catcher. And for this, we're going to um, look at the different sections and write down a gist statement for each of the four areas of the article. The introduction starts right below the photo and goes a little bit into the second page. You read those little paragraphs and then stop and write a gist statement, just of the introduction. Then the second thing you'll do is go to the section called light sleep stages. And that's in the middle of the second page. You read just those sections and then write a gist statement just about that section. What is it mostly about? What do you think? The third section is no longer in control. Just read that section. What is the gist? And the last section is on page three, fleshing out harmful toxins, okay? So do, do those four gist statements, and then define the five words on page two of your note catcher. And that really long word is one of them. Um, and also the two stages of sleep that were discussed in the article, NREM and REM, synapses shows up in this week's article again that's been in an article previously so I'd like you to take about 20 minutes to write those gist statements for each section of the article and to really dig into in your own words defining those five um, words from the article and you could look them up in a dictionary or you could google them but just be aware that sometimes a definition has words in it that you also might not know. So you gotta stay curious. We've talked about this before. Pause the video for about 20 minutes and I'll meet you back here to finish out today's lesson. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, welcome back. Thank you so much. I know our, our first uh, lesson with an article, it's a lot. There's a read aloud and then the gist statements take some time and vocabulary keeps us curious. Make sure you share your work with someone, maybe that you were talking with um, during the article or talking with after you read the article today. And also stay, stay interested in reading for your own pleasure. Um, something, another 20 minutes, get carried away a little more than that, a magazine, maybe something online, maybe you could read the newspaper online. Um, there might be something around your learning environment that would interest you. But reading just helps us become uh, more fluent learners and you should stay curious about the things that you would like to learn. Your fluency practice today is to use a timer, like a cell phone timer or a kitchen timer, and read the article starting at the top for 60 seconds. And when you're done at 60 seconds, put a, put a slash on the article and count up the words and how many you read today. By the end of the week, I think that number is going to go up. I hope you've had a great time today. I know it's work. I am so glad to be with you on it, and I hope you do make it a great day. I'll see you again real soon.